Okay, thanks again for, for, for being here. Um, as you may know, this is the second um, presentation. I don't want to call it class or lesson because I don't think it's the, it's the case. But um, talking about the cryptocurrencies or more generically about blockchains and, and all these different technologies. Um, so, yes, this is again the second class. The first class we talk about uh big um, blockchain technology what 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 that means uh, how it works at least on qualitative properties um it is really useful i think um and some examples there no examples being example of currency in this case <clears throat> so this this time the idea was to present a little bit more about uh, the usage in terms of, of wallets what that means um some idea of how can create and an example of the platforms to, to use them. A uh, couple of legal aspects that maybe can be relevant for, for the users on holding these, uh, these, these instruments, let's say, and, and obviously your, your question that for me is the most exciting part. Um, I must say that in many of these points, again, it's, it's a view of, of different technologies. It's, it's, I would not say it's infinite, but this is a lot, a lot of resources. So trying to, to put it all together is, is very difficult. And I think they're also boring because at the same time, uh, many things are exactly the same. <clears throat> so um, just a quick uh, summary again, uh, and I will pass this one of the point of last week, just, just to refresh ourselves. But um, one of the key points of this blockchain adoption is that essentially it will, it will take some time and, uh, and it's understood that a coordination of many things to happen during the, the next years. But something that is quite clear is that this, it start to be something normal, let's say, a normal thing for us and even more for, for future generation. So essentially the, the, the proposal of this, this uh, presentation was to have an idea how it works because we know that we'll, we'll be there anyway, basically. Um, so yes, essentially one of these uh, tools and, uh, and ideas are knowledge I have and obviously the limitation of, as all mine in this case. <clears throat> So again, some relevant points here. I am taking a lot of resources from, from the main websites uh, that I consider, let's say, clear reference of what is happening uh, without any bias or not without any, but uh, with minimum bias in, in terms of, the, of, of they are selling something or they are not selling anything in principle. So again, for example, in this reference, that is the, the main website for the Bitcoin the organization, uh, in the use of Bitcoin and in general use of cryptocurrency, it's important to, to inform yourself about what is, what is this kind of things, so what, what they do and what you want to do, in fact, uh, before to, because they have very different usage. I choose a wallet. This is something that we will talk about. That will depend a lot, uh, once again, of what you want to do, uh, what is the, your objective, um, and also your knowledge of this technology. You know, some, sometimes, if you know more, you can get some more complicated products, but uh, if you're just starting, you can go for something simple. Obviously, the idea is at some point you get those cryptocurrency. So how to get it? Uh, you know, you can buy it in a, in a website, but you can also transfer it directly from somebody else. Or essentially, how you get this, this, uh, this currency into your wallet. And also, and this uh, the part of it, or it's the promise once again, in, in terms of the future, how to spend this, no? Because if it's, uh, um, if not Bitcoin, but others like Ethereum, Ether, sorry, or other cryptocurrencies will be some kind of way of payment, how will it spend this, this, uh, this currency? <clears throat> so, so again, so uh, more of these points that uh, we will talk about wallets and how they are created and how the different types, but something that is very important no matter what is that it is, is, has to be secure in the same way that you have your real wallet. Even more important, these are the kind of assets that live only in the, the computers, in the virtual world, or in, the, in these uh, digital instruments. So loose access to, to this kind of wallet can be very, very bad, essentially, because it's not like a loose access to your house and you can try to open the door in other ways. Here will be essentially uh, you, you have to think that it's, you have to secure your, your, your password and your information because even if it's not 100% sure for many of these wallets, you, 
I prefer to believe that if you lose this thing, you will lose forever your resources. So it's quite important. Um, also, we talked uh, last week, um, but remember that this the price of Bitcoin, but also the other big cryptocurrencies is quite volatile. Um, and you need to take this into account in order to know how to use the, when using these currencies. Oh, something that is very important is that the Bitcoin and again, in general, cryptocurrency payment are irreversible. So one is done, cannot be undone. Um, this is quite important when you are sending or receiving uh, cryptocurrency, but also uh, in terms of a smart contract, something that we talked a little bit more last, a little bit, sorry, last week, I will mention again here. Um, and also when you are sending this uh, cryptocurrency to the wrong address or to the wrong wallet in terms of the, if you are sending some Bitcoins to a Ether wallet, that also is not only irrevocable, but it's lost forever. So that's that's all the important point. We talked already also that the, these these kind of transactions are anonymous. Let's say we we mentioned last time that the wallets are uh, some kind of account, like a, a number that you uh, is attached to this wallet, so the people can use this number to send uh, cryptocurrencies between them. But how to get to the owner of this account is the part that is anonymous. So it's very important, again, if you, or if anybody wants to keep this, this kind of level of privacy, not to, uh, to link your account with who you are, because that is completely public and it's part of this, um, the important thing about the blockchain is that all the records are public. This is the part of the decentralized of technology. So you can, I wouldn't say very easy, but with somebody with the knowledge you can track back all the the transaction essentially some is it's, it's not impossible it's not too complicated to get to know even the 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 amount of coin that a certain account has if you are able to essentially look all the transaction so <clears throat> in terms of government taxes and regulations i have just a, a couple of examples but uh, in general bitcoin is not an official cryptocurrency in, in general so it will depend a lot of the country, and it's very important also to be aware of this difference when when holding or when using these kind of assets. So, um, what is a wallet? Um, and by the way, if you want to have a have a question in the middle of the presentation, don't hesitate to to ask me. So, a wallet are essentially applications. That's very important. The word they are application that is, let you interact with your cryptocurrency account. Okay, and you can imagine that like the internet banking apps that let you see your your uh, how much money you have in your bank account, but without the bank. Okay, that's the important part. So your wallet essentially let you read your balance, send transactions, um, in particular in Ethereum, to connect that wallet with applications. I mean, for example, if you connect that wallet with a particular service that is. Uh, in, in similar way to how you connect your debit card to Netflix to get the automatic payment every month or things like that, you know. But something that um, is very important is that the wallet is only a tool for managing these Bitcoins or this Ethereum or this, this different currency. So it's, it's, um, it's not like a, you um, have a central authority for this. Or you, or you have this store in a central place and your wallets are like your bank uh, apps. So that means that you can swap wallets for providers at any time. I mean, the coins are completely uh, disentangled of the wallet. The wallet is the way to interact with the coin. And you can also have many, you know, in, the, in similar ways, uh, you can have as many um, wallets as, as you want in, in, the, in the different coin. Important, I didn't write it here, but it's important to imagine that a wallet is for a single type of coin, okay? That's other important um, thing to, to remember. And you can have several wallets for, you know, interact with several applications. Like you can have a wallet just dedicated to pay some service, a wallet uh, only for um, saving, another one for any other purpose. Um, because they don't have any custody of funds. You are the person who are the custody of this. So how can I create one? Well, there are first many things, um, or many, you know, many types or several types of, of wallets. 
one is the the most common is to have this application so essentially you have a um a web uh, a web yes or a desktop or a mobile app where you store your currency and you can manage from there you can send and you can receive current, uh, cryptocurrency or attach uh, an application that use those cryptocurrency you can also have something that is called a call or a hardware wallet and this is the picture that you see in the right just an example that i found where you can extract and this is something that we mentioned last week extract the the, the cryptocurrency from the blockchain and save it in a completely isolated uh, entity in this case like a, a, a pen drive for example no? that is is a is a secure way because essentially it's completely out of the of the of the internet so in principle uh, it's no there is no way that somebody through the internet can get to a something that you have stored offline in your in your room and finally there are the service provided that essentially are the custodians that are the most common way that people have cryptocurrency and we will see a little bit more about that so i have here a, a several example i i was reviewing several blogs and um, i think this was very complete and quite up to date obviously at the same time there is a lot of um how you prefer how you like let's say no but uh, so the the word best here can be a little bit subjective but um, in general you may hear about uh, coinbase it's a very popular um, a very famous uh, company that hold uh, cryptocurrencies uh, and it's, it's in the us it will be very probably uh, soon be a public market company other for example are um, the hardware wallet that like the picture i, I showed you just before uh, are also wallets for long term so one difference to have a wallet that you want to have because you really want to say this currency for 20 years uh versus something that you need to save but move at the same time um the wallets are very can have very different um features so this is why for example they have one called uh, sophie for uh, beginners that is quite simple because other you can have a lot of um uh, essentially monitor uh, plots or graph of what is happening conversion between the, the cryptocurrency uh, not only cryptocurrency to fiat or to you know dollars with francs etc but between them so there are applications that can become very complex um, also uh, other famous is kind of robin hood that uh, or eToro these kind of companies that um, have a mix between uh, um, products in the in the stock market and also cryptocurrency um, and, and many others. So again, just an, several examples, you can explore these links and, and take a look at what they look like. <clears throat> so remember the last, last week also, we mentioned about the smart contracts and, uh, and this picture about the vending machine is uh, uh, the simplified version of the smart contract. Just a quick reminder, smart contract is when uh, you have something programmed in a computer to do, to do something, to release an asset, uh, asset or, or pay to somebody if certain conditions are met. So in this case, you if you have a two Swiss francs and you put it into the machine and you press the button Coke, you will get a Coke. Basically, that's that's the smart contract. You don't have an interaction with a human. Um, essentially, it's a machine that delivers that for you. And also in the same way, to, uh, for, um, um, as, a, uh, as this machine, you cannot just put the Coke back and pretend to get the two, the two francs. It's something that is one time, it's unreversible. So remember about these um, smart contracts, let's say we have, uh, and I put this example here about the Ethereum, uh, Ethereum ecosystem, because it's an entire and very nice, at least from my point of view, ecosystem where you can have, um, and I put here this link to say, open the link. This was a note to myself, to what I am talking, showing basically, because I, I, I found this website very, very nice, where in terms of the Ethereum, that again is, um, is a blockchain where Ether or Ether and all the cryptocurrencies live on top of those. And these cryptocurrencies essentially are uh, sometimes attached or are, um, are used in a certain application to, to, to buy something, to have recurrent payments, to, to get some services, etc. So I opened this link essentially to show you that there is ways to choose your wallet here in terms of the features that you, that, we, that you want. For example, you want to interact to enter to your credit card. So that maybe that is the, the, the simplest way and the, for the people who want to start. Um, and you want to be able also to take it back, you know, to convert Ether back to, 
to fill that money. No? So you maybe want to have a feature that will allow you with, withdraw to your bank. Um, and essentially, if you have a couple of, for example, multi-sign account, that also means that you can have wallets that um, are attached to a particular um, account that needs more than one signature, let's call it like this, in order to perform certain operations. That can be also useful for, for certain things. I don't know, for you know, giving some cryptocurrencies to somebody. Um, and once two or three people say yes, the, the, the payment is, is done. So, so this is very cool because after you do your kind of very qualitative selection, the Ethereum website lets you know a couple of, of, of wallets that can fulfill this, this requirement, for example. No? And obviously from there, it will take you to that particular website. So I just, again, to let you know that it's not in terms of holding and you know, have it and look at the, 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 the currency, but also how you can use it basically in the in, in this uh, different platform so one example and i i, I put in plural at the beginning when i i, I offered the the syllabus but then it's stood later that the the the, the platform are essentially the same you know maybe the the colors are different some setups in the in the bottoms and the, the layout but um coinbase for ex is, a, is a very good example of how many of them looks like and so essentially Coinbase is a place that let you, this is a custodial account. So what that means is that you buy cryptocurrency through the platform, but in a similar way as when, for example, you do this in uh, Robinhood or in a, um, other kind of platform to buy a um, stock market um, shares, what happened is that is the platform that, uh, that uh, execute that order for you. So in, in, in real life, what happened is that it's not like a, you are the owner, but they are holding this for you. And is Coinbase in this case, who is the owner of the, of the currency in the similar way that other platform that they delivered for you, uh, how to buy a stock market uh, share, they are the face against the, 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 say the stock market to buy and sell. So it's in their computer, is in their infrastructure where your account, your wallets are living, okay? In this, in this, um, in this um, platform. Um, sorry, there is a video here, I, I will not play it because, but I found it that it's quite generic enough because sometimes they are too long or, or too complicated. I think this one is, um, show you how to simply open a, a, a wallet there if you want to watch it. So inside it looks like this, maybe, I don't know if you are already familiar with that, but again, you have a very similar um, user interface depending uh, in different platforms. Basically, you have um, a portfolio because you can have, I insist, more than one type of cryptocurrency. The price that is obviously uh, an important information that you may want to have. And in case of Convey, you have a lot of things depending, uh, for example, more tutorial information, blog posts about what is happening notification that you can set up um, uh, by yourself, for example, to trigger a notification once one of these um, assets uh, pass certain threshold in value, you know, up and down and receive a, a, a message, for example, things like this, but there are quite similar, um, all of them. No, all the cryptocurrencies that, for example, uh, let me see, let me move from this window because I want to be sure of what I'm saying. Well, in this case, yes, all on the right says the word, or there is a little bot blue button that says straight, but sometimes the platform also show assets or show cryptocurrency that you cannot post there just as a matter of information. So you have to also pay attention to that. that sometimes even when they list in 50 coins, in fact, the platform maybe only are able to, to deal with 10, to, to make trade with 10 of them. So <clears throat> going to model the legal aspect of this kind of, uh, of hold, you know, having or transact with this kind of instruments. Again, um, in terms of usage of holding and worldwide, it depends. There is no single answer. Each country is, is setting their own uh, rule for these instruments once they realize that there is, again, they are there and they need to, they cannot pretend yet anymore that they don't exist. Um, so it depends on the, on the geography you may find people or governments or institutions that are uh, dealing in a more uh, uh, welcome way, or that are just writing ways to, 
to uh, for, uh, essentially ban this this kind of instruments at all, uh, in all the possible ways um, and others are having in fact a mix you know creating their own government cryptocurrencies um, and we can talk about that if you have questions also but there have been again a very heterogeneous uh, environment depends on where you are or where uh, in the world so i just took a couple of examples that i found um, i think one of the um, important no in terms of because we are living there or, or something that happened but as we know uh, uh, many things that happen in the, in the united states of america is is obviously um, impacts the economies of many other places in the world so the fact that for example in terms of holding or use uh, cryptocurrency there uh, the uh, buying and selling crypto is taxable because the irs identified this as a as a property so it's a it's an asset that's in the same way that you have a, a, how, a, a car or jewels, etc. So this is what the, the couple of notes I put here. So there are taxes that are applied to the property. Um, like in the same way, again, that uh, antique or, uh, or things that appreciate in value, uh, you also apply to coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies. <clears throat> what you see on the, on the right, in fact, is part of this uh, um tutorial that coinbase has also because again being a us uh, based company but uh, it, it works well in many other places of the world but anyway they try to to let the people know what are the 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 obligations they say that, that uh, things that you need to take into account when when um, making taxes to 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 and using these kind of, of instruments um in the case of Switzerland, I also was looking around. There is um, a lot of information. Uh, I will not say contradictory, but sometimes, again, I am not a lawyer, so it's kind of complicated to, to, to understand, but uh, all the all little details, especially because as in the US, uh, Switzerland is also a very federalized place. So um, and things can change between Canton and Canton, as you may very much better know than me, similar to the United States in this case, but essentially, uh, Switzerland taxes the this as um, when you buy and sell stuff. So you see, you use it essentially to pay for um, <clears throat> for goods or for services. Um, is, is part of the, the, the this uh, this tax um, <clears throat> in the in the way that you use as a as a normal currency, as a normal fiat currency. <clears throat> also, um, you can get paid. In, in cryptocurrency, and if that is the case, uh, the the that salary, let's say, is is also taxable in the same way that the normal in the normal the normal money. <laughs> um, and finally, another maybe important note is that for investor, the income tax is you will maybe have income tax if it's, you may essentially get some return for for using the access to you know to to try to make transactions to. With, uh, with cryptocurrency. And there is a lot of much more scenario, uh, not only for, uh, let's say for, for, for people, but also for companies that uh, that's, um, is even more complicated. But in uh, my generic understanding of this is that it's not in, the, in, a, in a restrictive way. In fact, it's very, it's very welcome to all these technologies, just um, the fact that obviously I need to put some, some order what is happening. But just to give you an idea, the, the Ethereum Foundation is, in, is also based here in Switzerland. Uh, one of the, 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 the places where the TV was founded was here in Switzerland and is still there. Um, there are many companies that uh, are based here um, because these different regulation are essentially welcoming this kind of technology. And uh, so I, I have, when looking into this information, I saw more and more um, company and services providers based in, in Switzerland in terms of, of the crypto market. <clears throat> and um, one other thing I add, because it was mentioned last week uh, in, in our conversation and have been also in the, in the news, so I put a couple of, of, of lies about this, of the non-fungible token that have been, again, a lot in the, in the news. Um, <clears throat> so just to give one definition of what, what they are. So I define of a kind of token which is uniquely identified and is again it's very easy to distinguish among, among many others so talking about blockchain that uh, mentioned last time 
is a way to store information or to store digital objects in a permanent way and that is uh, virtually impossible to replace, to falsify, to change the properties. You can imagine that these, um, these objects can be also things like, a, and this is something that happened more and more, like you can save a piece of art or, uh, or a patent or, or a blueprint about something uh, you know, that, that you are created, like an invention into blockchain. And in this way, it's, 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 a, it's a very nice way to, in, without any reason to, sorry, without any doubt, to know what was the original author, what was the time of creation, what was the, the, this unique object. Always again talking about in the digital, in the digital world. So, because they are running in the, in, the, in, the, in the blockchain, they can be easily to track and also they can be exchanged. So you can use that in a similar way as a coin, but in the difference is, and this is the, the figure on the right, the difference between the Bitcoins uh, and this uh, NFT is that the Bitcoin, you don't really care too much which Bitcoin you have, you know, the Bitcoin 10,000 or the Bitcoin 1 million and one. So because it's, it's the same way that you don't really care too much what is the, the, the notes of 100 Swiss francs that you have in your hands. They are all the same in terms of the, the, the way that we use it. But in terms of the, the NFT, you do all the contrary. So you have a unique object and also the transfer to that or that object is, is unique. And this other person or this other entity or this other account that will be the owner of that object um, is once again, is the only one that can have it at the same time. Um, so that have been starting to grow and grow and people is like giving value to these properties. Uh, so <clears throat> one of the examples that happened, and this is the, the screenshot of this, of this figure on the, on the right also is that uh, people, artists and companies like uh, NBA uh, in the United States and, and others have been selling this kind of digital object that again can be a painting can be the digital reproduction of a painting that is uh, also different because it can be something that was drawn digitally, but can be also something that was is in the real world, but the certificate that this is the unique one, the only one is in the blockchain. Also things like, uh, you know, selling a tweet or stuff like that. And once again, here is a lot of um, subjective here in, in, in a similar way, at least in my opinion, as it's with the art in some sense that is, is the people who is giving the value to these pieces and putting very, very high um, uh, valuations to, to, to these kind of things uh, because of this property or uniqueness, okay? Mm. Um, again, I tried to, to go a little bit, no, well, the contrary, not to go too much in details. The idea is that to trigger some of your questions uh, during the, ne uh, the next minutes. Um, like last time, I also add, a couple of videos, in this case are um, two videos, one about Bitcoin and the other about Ethereum. They are more recent, the Ethereum uh, is from this month and Bitcoin two months ago in January. This is also a um, uh, very interesting guy teaching about many things in, in economy. Um, so hopefully you find it also interesting and, and, and fun at the same time, I just find, uh, uh, the idea of giving to you a couple of examples that will be not the, once again, the standard tutorial of somebody like me right now talking about these things, but something more, uh, I don't know, fun to see. Um, so please let me know if you have any question about uh, all what I said. And I will share with you also, by the way, the, obviously the, the slides, if you want to go to into these links, because I include many reference uh, that help me to prepare all this uh, information. Let me see if you are still there. Um, yeah, I have just one question on the wallets. Please. <clears throat> yeah, if I um, decide on a wallet and put some, buy some Erythrium and put it in there, do I have to pay fees to the software app that I use? So, um, yes. No. For example, here let's let's let's, let's distinguish between again the wallet. Uh, is is a I know there can be 
um, interesting to understand at the beginning, you can hold the bitcoins or the any cryptocurrency in the in your phone. So it's not it's not yeah. in any in any server to any company, and mm -hmm. you have a wallet to interact with other wallets basically. So mm -hmm. in that particular case, if you want to send and pay something to somebody to another wallet, you will pay a fee. Yes, but this mm -hmm. fee is a fee to the network. Yes, it's the way that this network is maintained. So it's like a reward, let's say, to all these different thousands of people around the world that have this computer and allows you to use this network and send that uh, currency to the other wallet. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is a fee to the blockchain. And this is how it's maintained. This is how it's self-sustained in some way. If you, in fact, come to, oh, sorry, if you, now you are talking about a, a platform like Coinbase or eToro or Robinhood, in this case, you may have fees to pay to them. So mm -hmm. they they do that for you. That is to pay to the network. And obviously they will have some profit for all this, no? To set up all this user interface to et cetera, et cetera. So the, the value will change depends on what you are using. And they say, depends on what you are using, a wallet by yourself or a wallet through a platform. And also depends of the, of the coin that you are using, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Oops. Start the video. Um, yes, please let me know if you have any other question. Let me maybe come back here in the meantime. Hi. Hi, yeah, I've got a question, Steve. Please. Hi, Stephen Twine. Hi, yeah, no, really enjoy uh, mm -hmm. this one and the one last week, so really big. Thank fan. you. Um, quick question on Ethereum. Um, I, I heard that, is it going to be changing versions or something this year? And, and what do you think that means? I mean, did you, I just, I just heard that was all. Uh, yes, let me, uh, yes, they will have a version two or like, like, a, like a, a new way to, 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 Ethereum to work. So let me try to find one of my figures that help me to explain uh, what that means because maybe I don't have any of this small figure. But um, <clears throat> what is happening, maybe I can recover from the from the previous class that I have here somewhere. Yes, maybe here. So I am trying to profit of this little thing here on the top in the middle. So what happened is that most of the X blockchains uh, work in something that is um, uh, the mining process. So the way that you send or you receive or you make transactions into the network is essentially the network has to validate that transaction. So all the computers in principle, ideally have all the same information. So you, um, when you send a certain amount of coin to one computer to another, it will happen that they have to check that this is really possible so that you have the money that is going to the right way and it, there is a kind of consensus and it's a proof of work so this mining so this computer working making some calculation and to be sure that this transaction is is unique so what they would want to do is to change that to what i, if I remember well is proof of stake the stake and okay, stack that's, 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 sorry for the pronunciation but um so essentially not all the computers will need to know all the information about the blockchain that's a significant change, not only in the philosophy, but in a technical point of view, it will allow many more transactions. What is happening right now is that people is comparing, you know, especially people who want to criticize this technology and says, okay, but you know that if you use Visa or MasterCard, they, they make millions of transactions per minute, you know, around the world. While in Bitcoin uh, blockchain is maybe a few hundred per minute and in Ethereum, maybe a few thousand per minute. So, if you really want to scale this to be something natural for many people, you need to go uh, and produce and to have more and more um, transactions. So that change is behind the say behind the scenes or in the back end. So the network will be allowed uh, amount other things because I'm sorry I don't know the details, but that particular is very important. Allows to make many more transactions uh, per unit of time and be more uh, um, efficient basically. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you. That's really good. You're welcome.
And you said last week, um, sorry, Steve, again, you, you talked to somebody mentioned about artwork being bought with, with um, crypto. I thought that yeah. was so interesting. What, what other areas do you see the uh, crypto will be going into? So you mentioned artwork, but are there other areas of society that you think this will have a use that, that, that will be applied to certain areas of, 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 of our daily life? Um, yes, very much, yes. I mean, something that for me, uh, uh, try to see as objective as possible is not so much about humans using this, but about machines using cryptocurrencies. And what I mean is that once you imagine um, that you are able to do this thing about a smart contract, when you program something to happen, some transaction to happen, if it's a certain condition happens, you open a world uh, of possibilities. And uh, it sounds like a, like a commercial, but um, what I mean to say is talking back, uh, sorry, link with your previous question. Once you increase the amount of um, in, transactions per unit of time in a blockchain, you also decrease the, uh, the amount of the fee that has to be paid because it will be more. So you, again, will be more uh, transactions. So you can uh, essentially ask for less uh, on each transaction. So when the fees go very, very small at some point, the idea is that imagine, for example, that you have an electric car and you go to a station to charge that electric car. When you plug in the car, uh, you know, I don't know, take half an hour, whatever, and you come back and you just unplug it and continue. And there is no any transaction by you to pay for that electricity, for example, it will be the car because you will assign a wallet to the car that will pay to the station that has another wallet that once that condition is, okay, are you plugging to me? So there is some kind of, you know, near field uh, communication there. And it will take the money from the car account to the station account. And you can imagine many other situations like this, like a simple things, like you have an account, once again, in your car, no, it's not you to pay the, 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 the parking, to pay um, when you pass, I don't know how, sorry, how this call when you pay, for example, I see when you go to France and you have to pay for the tax to, to cross the road, not in the highway. Uh, sorry, I don't remember. Uh, thanks. Uh, or, or things like this. So you will have, in my point of view, not too much in terms of people buying and selling stuff, or maybe the, the speculation that you see in the stock market and the, uh, in the news, basically, but more machines. So the internet of things, how it's called, paying between themselves for services. Like again, for example, you can connect to different uh, Wi-Fi or so different houses. And when you pass by, you can connect. So your phone connect to the Wi-Fi for 10 minutes. And it's the phone wallet that will pay to that particular local network uh, for the for that internet, for example, no? um, and so on and tickets and stuff like this in the bus. So I imagine more in terms of machine paying to machines that humans paying to machines or human paying to human. Right, fantastic. Hi, Arturo. Hi, it's Sylvia. Just another question on the usage of the amount of energy, because I understood that the energy to maintain the blockchain is as much as it takes to run the country of Argentina. Mm. Is that true? Um, depends on the, how you measure that, but in general, yes, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And, um, and this is something that is also important in terms of when you change uh, the way that the blockchain works. So to reply to your question, yes. Unfortunately, this proof of work, so this mining of the, of the Bitcoin, for example, that is more famous, it, it takes a lot, a lot of energy, a lot of electricity. This is why, for example, one of, uh, one of the reasons why the miners or the mining are basically in places where the electricity is very cheap. You cannot put an, uh, one of these a mining place is maybe um, again in, in, in maybe, I don't know, here or in Spain because it will be very expensive. But if you have it in China where you have very big hydroelectric uh, production of energy, you can have mining there. So one of the things, especially for example, Ethereum is, is looking for is essentially that if you move from proof of work to proof of stage or another ways to ensure the, the security of the blockchain, but with less computing, that will also reduce the amount of energy that is expended to create it and to have it. Okay, thank you. That's something a bit negative with the blockchain there. Yes, yes. Major. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you're welcome. Uh, 
Uh, sorry, there is also a question here in the chat that just noted and it says that um, uh, that you bought some bitcoins in 2013 in a platform based in, in Japan, and the yes, that place was stolen basically, uh, and the case is still in legal process. So yes, so this is why one of the reasons. So in order to avoid, let's say, again, when you have custody, so platforms, they are vulnerable to be to be hacked and and, and to, to get the coins from there. Depends on what you want to do. So for example, if you want to hold it because you think that these assets will, uh, will increase in value with, over time, so and you will not touch it. So instead of have um, uh, an account in a company that is doing the holding for you, you can simply get a wallet and hold it yourself. So doesn't need to be also a hardware, uh, can be also an application. If you have an application with you, and for example, in, in a computer at home, um, you can have it there. And if that computer is not connected to the internet, in principle, it's impossible for you to, to be hacked. You know? uh, once again, it's important to, to ensure that the password of those accounts uh, are well safe so you don't lose it. Uh, again, and lastly, if you really want to be sure and you don't want, or you will not be using this constantly, you can save in one of these hardware wallets and put it at home. And there is, again, as I mentioned last year, uh, last week, sorry, if somebody knows and go into your house and take your pen drive, there is no other way that somebody can take it from you. So hopefully that reply your question, Stasia. No, no problem, sure. So I was also thinking, I, don't, I mean, I will mention to the to the PTA organizer, but um, there is more thing that we can also explore here. So maybe if, it, if it for you, uh, it's a good idea, I can prepare another of this presentation with another thing that is important. That is this, oh, sorry, that Zoom put many windows on me. This, the apps that is, that is decentralized apps that where, where you can really see how will be the usage of this kind of uh, technology and not just holding <laughs> investment, but uh, how you can really pay for stuff or, or set up things um, that is already happening, in particular here in, in Switzerland. Sorry, I had a quick question. You, you showed, you showed uh, some links to videos. Can you share them afterwards, the link to those videos? Yes, yes, sure. I will, I will essentially, uh, sorry, one second. I prepared this little website where I am hosting these classes. I right. prepared it in the chat. And um, after dinner, you will have it there. <laughs> uh, okay, no worries. Also some fish. Yeah, because it'd be good. It'd be good because it's such an interesting subject. It'd be good if they got links to like, yeah, where, where you get more info and any anything like, cool. yeah, that's that, very interesting. I'm not sure, I, I put it this here because I, I, I mean, I find interesting to, to keep it. So you have the, what is this, sorry, cryptocurrency? The slide from the last week and also the, the video. I will do something similar. You will find here the slides and the, and and the, the video. And, and a quick question as well. Do you think the banks are gonna get behind this then? Do you think they'll ever, I know the banks are all thinking about it, but do you, do you think that one day we'll go for it, this? Or against it. Or, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of skepticism and yet there is some, um, uh, Brit, yeah, you know, supporter. <laughs> it's a real di it's a dilemma. Two, two wings. <laughs> I've got friends. Yeah. Who, if I mention this to a friend of mine, they'll just say, "Oh, rubbish casino." No. <laughs> yeah. They'll say it's a casino roulette, and then other people say, "No, no, it's an opportunity." So I'm, it's yeah, like really dipolar view. Yeah. Um, for what I see in the news, many of these very big banks are in fact getting, I mean, holding them, buying them. Once again, uh, uh, and I mentioned last, last time, because of the volatility of these guys, that by the way, this, uh, I, I don't know if you remember this little plot here. Now today, the, the market capitalization is almost something close to the $5 trillion. So it has changed quite rapidly, but it's still compared with other assets is small. So it's very easy to, to make it up and down, let's say, uh, uh, if you know how to play this game uh, as a bank. You know? But um, I think that they, they didn't, 
they may be, what they will happen from my point of view is that they will buy this kind of fintech company, you know, in the same way that maybe you, I will not compare one to one, but I don't know exactly how it grow, but you have this twin, no? that how you pay uh, with your phone, that is essentially something that was created or was, I, I guess, bought by UBS. So you have a fintech, so a company who create this kind of application. So I guess that one of the way that they, they can support in some way and also obviously keep the clients there and, uh, and their money that is important for them is to support this kind of mixed wallet when you can go and come um, once obviously the regulatory uh, scenario, you know, the law there is, is, is allows them to do it. So the people say, okay, why you will open up another bank, uh, another coin, uh, sorry, another wallet if I can do it with my bank. And maybe many people will do for that. I think that that's, that's the other thing. I think that the most important, at, at the same time, the bank will just need to create something, a new product to keep the thing running. What I am more interested in, what will be the governments will do with this? Uh, in terms of uh, many people is, uh, sorry, several governments are doing is they are created their own crypto uh, dollar, crypto Swiss franc, crypto gen. And that will be very interesting to see because in that case, it will be a centralized uh, uh, currency in the sense, obviously, it's the central bank or the equivalent the Federal Reserve, etc., or that country that will um, issue the, the, the this coin without passing to their own bank. So it's, it's, it's in some way like a, if you go back 50 years back in time, maybe a little bit more, it's like a, you really go into the central bank and they give you gold without passing through any of the bank. <clears throat> so that can be very, very interesting to, to, to see because uh, the government will say, okay, we, we may use each our own and r remove for some part of the financial market, the, the, the bank itself. because you will not need a bank account to have Swiss franc or this digital version of the Swiss franc. That is very cool. Even when it's still is banked by the Swiss federal, say the, the, the government. Yeah, actually, yes, very interesting. I actually saw um, there is a bank opens in Switzerland now that's just a crypto bank. And I was so shocked. Yeah. Yeah, no, again, when you allow the, window, the door to, to, to hold these assets, you can, you will find many people who will provide us a service holding for you and do stuff for you with those. Um, Arturo, it's Sylvia again. Just one clarification mm. if you can. Um, when you buy stocks and shares, the stock, the value of the stock is actually based on the company the capital and how well the company is doing. So at least you know the value of your stocks and shares, even though there's a lot of confidence um, dependable on the value, confidence, confidence in the market. But with crypto, there's nothing that it's backing it up, is there? Just the demand from people that are trading in it. Is that right or? Um, yes, yes. I mean, if uh, by the book, you are completely right in this sense uh, because uh, the company, in principle, ideally, uh, the, the the shares are uh, so a representation of the value of the share, sorry, of the performance of the assets or uh, the future of the company. Obviously, because you are buying more into the future and in the present. Um, this is why, for example, you see you know prices of electric cars going for being the most valuable company in the world and. There is also there a lot of belief that the, the company will do much better in two, three years from now. In the case of cryptocurrency, yes, it's true. Also, there is not any material or real world assets to bank to, to this kind of cryptocurrency. But the people is, is in the most simple way, is look at them as a store of value. So again, in the similar way that you can buy gold and say, okay, yes, I, do, but I can really you know, take it with me or I can use it in a jewel and I know it's there, but at the same time, it's an agreement between us as a human kind that this particular metal has value. So this is what is happening with this, particular with Bitcoin that have value just because you can, you can store it there and others will think it's the same. So you can send it across the world and have millions in, in things that are uh, uh, essentially in, a, in, in your cell phone. Um, this is for one side as an asset to save 
to store a value. But in terms of use in Ethereum, I, there it will be a lot of things that you can attach, even if you can attach one-to-one -to, -one to a real world things, yes, you can do it to real world uh, actions. So once again, when you have this programmable money and you have objects to pay between them, because imagine again that you, you have this, uh, your car paying for your gas. If you do this in a traditional way, you have to have a credit card, the car work to the to Visa or, or any company back to the machine and say, yes, you have the money, yes, you got it. So, but if you disentangle <laughs> this and you just left the machine talk between them, uh, that that also has a lot of value, especially in places where, where um, it sounds very futuristic, but you in fact can imagine use cryptocurrency in places with in developing countries more than in developed world because the infrastructure there is not capable to, you know, to keep with the internet or car uh, credit card transaction, but very easily can be done with, with cryptocurrency. Thank you very much. That was a very clear explanation. <laughs> now I've, I've got my head around cryptocurrency. Thanks. That's very nice to know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's just what I needed to hear. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, it's, it's seven o'clock. Oh, well, thanks again for, for, for the time, for the, uh, for the support for this idea. <laughs> um, and uh, again, I will, I will put the other class, the, uh, the next class in the website so you can revisit. Uh, any feedback is very much welcome. If you want to know more and, you know, we can continue chatting even by email, happy to, to, to help. Uh, and, uh, and if you don't have other questions, I will, Thank you for being there. Oh, thank you. It was absolutely great. <clears throat> we really enjoyed it. It was absolutely fantastic. And you've definitely opened up a new world for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> very, very kind. Thanks. Yes, I support that. I second that. Well, thank you very much, Arturo, for taking the time. No, you're welcome. Welcome. And making oh, it so simple. Thanks. Thank you. thank you so much. That's very interesting. Thanks. Thank you. Have a, have a good night, everybody. Then. Thanks. <laughs>